What inspired us to start this company as engineers was the urge to solve a problem that we found. And we found a very, very big problem. Give me a second, give me a second. <laughs> And I have this thing, and so does Bernat, where when we see something broken, we need to go and fix it. It might be a table, it might be a chair, it might be how the world is managing organizations, and we decided that we could not fix it. So it's more than an inspiration, it's like an obsession to get this problem solved. I guess there is excitement when you start a company, but you start into this problem solving mode immediately. So it's more like an obsession of like, what's the biggest problem we can solve today with the resources we have now, and in the case of an early stage startup, with the cash that we have today, which tends to be very, very much the constraint. So you're starting to find opportunities that you can solve in a very short period of time that can guarantee your right to move on to the next stage of a company. One of the things that I think about in the early days of Factorial was that we didn't have the right to exist. We had to prove that the market needed something like Factorial. We thought the market needed something like Factorial, but there was no evidence. There was a moment by the end of 2019 which coincidentally is when my daughter was born, so it was a very intense period of my life, where we realized that there were a lot of customers that were willing to pay for the solution that we had for them, and that we could barely keep up with demand. So the company became viable financially, and also we saw a path going forward where we could have thousands and potentially millions of customers that we could help. I think as an entrepreneur, you face failure almost every day, because I believe that if you're not facing failure often enough, it means you're not trying hard enough. So we're always doing things that are almost impossible or that most people think are impossible, which means that we fail at many of them. Or we fail for a while until we stop failing. I just think tolerance for failure and acceptance that it's a path to learn and to eventually succeed is very important. And earning the patience to you know, sustain this failure, motivate the team, and make sure the company survives is really, really important. The patience for failure is definitely something that has evolved over time. Uh, as I grow a little bit older, and um, I learned about many experiences in life that is definitely something that has changed. I have a addictive and obsessive personality. So I get into all sorts of random topics and then I, I go into the rabbit hole of learning everything about the topic. So every couple of months is something new. Uh, I read books, I watch talks, I go to events, I listen to podcasts, I practice myself, whatever it is. And uh, I just love learning and knowing about a lot of things. I don't know if I've learned that, I think that's quite natural, but the most important trait, the one that I value the most about myself is what I call relentless optimism, which is always thinking that things can go well and that if you're really convinced that they can go well, you can eventually wield this imagination into reality. So I think that's true in life. It just helps me be very happy because unless it's like a really, really life-threatening problem, most aren't then everything's gonna be fine and we will find a solution or we can ignore the problem. And exa exactly the same applies to business. I think Bernat and I are different in some areas, but we're very similar in this relentless optimism and in this obsession in, in changing the world in a way that we think we're well positioned to change it. So yes, I think in that sense we're very similar. Probably the biggest pivotal moment in my life was when my daughter was born four and a half years ago. Um, it gave me this insane long-term vision of the world. I guess I was more selfish before, thinking about my time in this planet and having fun in the moment. And from that point on, I started thinking about you know, what's happening with the world, with the people, with the economy, with the planet. Um, and it definitely changed the way I think. One beautiful thing about kids, which I learned with my daughter, Ainoa, is how pure and simple they are. There is no bullshit. There is no politics. There are no made-up problems. Sometimes she can get frustrated, but I understand the pureness of her frustration. So it's actually beautiful to help her understand that maybe that frustration is okay, that she will be able to move on past this frustration. Definitely the company drives more frustration and tests my patience more, because I think humans, as we get older, sometimes we get to overcomplicate things and we create imaginary problems. And that's one thing that I'm always trying to fight are imaginary problems. They just go to the root essence of things, find the real, real problems and ignore everything else and focus constructively and optimistically in solving these problems. There is a very difficult transition as a, as a manager or leader or entrepreneur that becomes a manager and a leader, which is when you really, really realize that doing the task yourself is not your job anymore, 
and you always read these books, or at least I did, about you know what does it mean to be a CEO and all these management principles and so on. And it's very alien. It's very hard to understand what they're talking about until one day you realize that sometimes the best thing you can do is really to focus on communicating well why we're trying to achieve something and making sure that you're recruiting exceptional talent and that you're helping them work together, not necessarily doing the thing yourself. Yeah, I think many people see um, a negative connotation around the concept of obsession. But to be honest, many people find negative connotations about many things. I'm just an optimist, so I try to find the positive connotation about concepts. And obsession, to me, is a good thing. It's, it's drive to learn more and to go deeper and farther than maybe anybody has been. So, I don't know, you can choose to find the negative or the positive in things, I choose to find the positive.